Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I know it's been quite some time since I put out a video, but I've been busy. Um, I was actually sick a couple times over the last couple of months, so I've been kind of slow with progress, at least out here. Uh, first, I was trying to get the garage organized and ready for my winter schedule so I can work on this project in here and get things organized and a bit better. Uh, in the meantime, I have spent some time inside working with CAD. And as you saw, um, this design is quite different now. Um, I ended up redesigning uh, this intake quite a bit. And I'll get into some reasons why I did that in a minute. As you might have seen, I don't know if it puts out an alert to you guys or not, but I have memberships active on my channel. If you'd like to be a member, feel free. Uh, I'm still working out the perks and stuff, but a lot of the perks and part of the membership program will have a lot to do with this intake. So if you guys want to support the channel and, and help me out, then please consider becoming a member. But anyway, um, let's just get into this. I spent some time redesigning this intake. There were some things that were making it difficult to do the throttle linkage, and that was my main reason. And then I also wanted to increase the flow. So let's get in here, and I'm gonna show you guys some things I did, and uh, some changes I actually need to make to this design right here. Now here I just grabbed this pad and pencil because I wanted to take some notes. Um, I pretty much guessed on my spacing as far as how close I put those runners together and um, I just wanted to take some notes of the measurements because I do have in mind um, a spacing that I would like but I had to start somewhere so I figured I would just guess and then uh, go from there. And I had attempted to line these runners up so that they were uh, parallel with each other but uh, as you can see they are still a little bit off so I'm just taking some of the measurements here they are here so that I can go back in CAD and make some corrections. So basically I wanted to put that fitting in as far as I could so I could take a measurement that I'm about to take here in the next shot. This will be my idle air control valve. So this is a valve, um, it's used in pneumatic controls uh, to adjust air pressure to certain mechanisms in pneumatically powered machines. So I figured um, I could use it for an idle air control valve. I like them because they, they function much the way that valves on an engine function. Uh, you can loosen a nut on them and then tighten them with a screwdriver to set them in place, just like adjusting valves on an engine. Uh, but I'll have more on that later. Okay, so I have my new revised intake that um, after taking my measurements of this one, I was able to make some changes and get it pretty much where I want it. We'll see once we get it mounted on the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this um, test piece off and install the new one. And we'll see if it um, holds up. And then I'll show you some of the changes I made. Some of them will be quite obvious, but some of them are a little bit more subtle. So let's go ahead and remove this install these guys and see how it fits. Hope you guys can see this well. Um, some of the changes, I might have mentioned it before. Um, before, these were a lot closer together and I kind of wanted to match the spacing between them from front to back and also 
I wanted it to be the same left to right, just so it looked a little bit more symmetrical. And I also lined up the runners so that they matched. And um, that's because I wanted to make it easier for the throttle linkage, um, because obviously if they're staggered, if I could line up everything in a straight line, then I don't have to worry about um, the linkage being different from one side to another, because I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. And we'll see later, hopefully next episode on this, how I configure the throttle linkage, but we got it lined up perfect. Um, you know, there's no gap here, no gaps. Um, and if I measure here, it probably isn't perfect from front to back or from left to right uh, or match because we have about uh, just a hair over 53 millimeters between here and it's a little bit less here. And I just wanted to get it close. We're at like 51. So it's still two millimeters off, but it is close and it'll look, you're not gonna be able to tell that by looking at it. So I'm happy with that. Um, so now uh, there's a few minor things. As you saw on the first set, I did crack the bung that um, my uh, idle air valve um, feeds into, or the, I yeah, cracked the bung there. Um, I think that might be fixed with a higher layer count. Of course, this isn't the final material because this is just a PLA, but uh, it cracked on the layer line, which is concerning to me, but I'm gonna pursue just finding a way to make that stronger. Um, uh, I have a few other ideas on what I can do, but we're just gonna play around with it and see what happens. Um, I could make it a little bit more robust. And let me just show you where it cracked. So obviously the weakest point on any 3D print is the layer line. So we have a crack right there. And I think simply making that more robust will help. Um, I'm thinking I might even just run it over, but we'll see. I'm gonna go into CAD, make those adjustments, hopefully um, get a full print done of both sides. That way uh, we can start on our throttle linkage. Oh, and just one more thing. Um, I did do fillets on all these edges to radius them so I don't have any hard edges, but I'm gonna have to make that a little bit more pronounced. Um, this is a one millimeter fillet and I was having issues with a two millimeter, which this is simple to go in and change. So I'm gonna go and increase that so I have a more of a rounded edge on all these edges and that will also add some strength. So let's go inside. I'm gonna jump on some CAD, make some adjustments, and then I'm hoping in this episode we can get a final print, or not a final print, but get the full thing printed. So I made all my changes and it looks like I'm not gonna be done in time for this video because we have five days, eight hours and 42 minutes that this is gonna take to print. So hopefully the next video, we'll be able to take a look at how it came out and the changes I made and see how it looks on the engine. Well, I know we didn't get a lot done in this video, but you know, these things do take a lot of time. And you know, after being sick and everything, it really did put um, a halt on things for a little bit. But next episode, I'm really hoping I can start on the throttle linkage. I do have some drawings done and um, I just got to wait for this print to finish, which it'll be done hopefully by the end of the weekend or uh, yeah, the end of the weekend. Um, so, but yeah, next video should have some throttle linkage started and maybe even have some moving parts, but we'll see, we'll see. Not sure how long or what issues I'm gonna run into with the printer and with, I've been having some issues. There was an update with the slicer and I think there's some bugs, but either way, thank you guys for watching. And once again, um, I do have memberships open on the channel. So if you'd like to help out, I'd really appreciate it. But if not, please subscribe, continue watching and I'll have some updates um, in the next week or so on what we're gonna do next with this thing and how the throttle link is gonna work out. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.